Gonna yap on too much before we get in you can tell by the title of this video it's a van conversion tour love how everything turned out if any of you guys know or are interested in uh, a van conversion we are located in Ontario uh, with COVID and everything we decided to start it up it's our passion traveling in a van we also found out we do like building them as well um, so we're gonna give you a tour of this van the company is Vancini Conversions everything will be in the description below uh, if you want to get in touch with us, the Instagram, stuff like that, email, and yeah, not too much. We haven't been traveling um, because of COVID, but we are planning on going out west. Everything seems to be getting a little bit better in our van, but I really wanted to show you guys, and uh, I'm super jealous of this van. I wish it was ours, but it's not. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the tour. Any questions, leave them down below, and we should have a link to every single thing we use in this build uh, down below uh, if you want to check that out. All right, let's get right into it. Before we hop in the van, sorry if you can hear some traffic in the background. A um, little bit about the van. I know you guys love all this. It is a 2012 Mercedes Sprinter. It's the 170 wheelbase. Um, nothing much, no modifications on the outside other than electrical hookup and a uh, 3500 rated towing hitch. On the roof, I'll get into some of the electrical. We do have 740 watts of solar and two max air fans. Um, so we fit pretty much as much solar as we could on the roof, 740 watts. This thing's never running out of power. Okay, we'll start inside the van first, and then I'll show you the garage afterwards, all the electrical. Um, yeah, we'll start with the inside. All right, we kind of wanted to section this van off for them. Um, they wanted kind of like a seating area, which I think is really important in a van. You can host some people and the bedroom kitchen on the back side. Up front here, uh, they went with these custom seats I've never seen in the van before. They're amazing. Uh, they even got the Mercedes logo embroidered on them. They are obviously on swivels. You can tell they're swiveled around right now. The amazing thing about these seats, they're leather, they're comfy. And I'll show you some footage on the side. They are actually massaged and heated for those long, long drives going across country, wherever you're going, you have a nice seat heater, especially for winter days like this, and you have five different massage settings, which is amazing. I love them. Definitely my next van I do. These are gonna be in. On either side, our uh, clients like to read, stuff like that. Uh, so this is a table here, a table here. We have these little adjustable 12 volt lights, which I thought were pretty handy, uh, especially at nighttime, you're looking in the glove box. These lights can be a little uh, dim. These are handy to have. And right above that is the diesel heater. We got the five kilowatt. It is blasting right now, 28 degrees. It's freezing outside, and I'm actually super hot in here. These things work great. That's super easy, accessible. And uh, right below the seat is the diesel heater, which is blasting away right now. You can adjust it, blows all the way to the back. And uh, definitely, being in Canada, you need a heater. It's almost uh, impossible to live without one. Up top, yet again, we did this in our van and a couple other friends' vans uh, who did the build. A lot of people don't use this space. Uh, more and more you see people using it now. It's amazing. Like overhead, you don't need to be able to stand up here. You can throw a bunch of crap up there, whatever you need. Uh, so right now, they just have all their miscellaneous stuff. We actually have our camera bag just sitting up here as we record. And uh, some of the things, we wanted to finish this van professionally as we can. So stuff like this. These trim pieces on the side are easily removed just by magnets. And you can still get back up in there if you ever have to fish um, some more wires for a future light bar, stuff like that. These are removable and uh, I think they just cleaned up the van pretty nice. Moving on to their seating area. The only thing that's not done in the van yet, they're just waiting for custom upholstered cushions. They have a little seat here which is for the third person to sit. Obviously, live edge, table, uh, they picked out this piece custom, we shaved it, trimmed it down, uh, epoxied it, and uh, it's pretty clean. It looks nice, adds a little rustic look to the van. Um, so you can sit here, obviously it's a lagoon, you can raise it, you can take it off, you can move it around, um, suitable for everyone. So this is the seating area, you can fit three, four people depending how you want to cram in here. Um, 
yeah, I think this is a pretty functional place. Uh, they're on with a curved bench instead of a straight bench. Uh, adds a little more flow to the van and uh, everything's not so boxy. I said I'd show you the windows on the inside. These windows are pretty much identical except this one has one that opens. Um, pretty nice for the summer to get some draft going in here, especially with both fans. Uh, so those are easily open, opened. Um, lock. Super happy with the quality of these. Um, don't worry, windows are super easy to install. I was a little worried. Um, they came out nice. Definitely wish to put more windows in my van build. On the tops and a lot of the, I guess, trim pieces of the van, we just went with some cloud white pieces. Don't want to keep it all open and exposed. I think that cleaned up pretty nice. In this area, they did want a big open walkway, but we decided you can never have enough cabinet space. So we went with this. Counter space. Counter space, not cabinet space. We went with this flip up. It's on pretty heavy duty hinges. You can almost sit on there, I'd like to say. Um, so definitely if you're cooking, prepping, if you want to even sit here, you can use it as a desk. They have more than enough counter space in this van. Also, if someone's sitting here and you're hosting, it's like another table and it's not that tricky to get down. Kind of lift it up and it goes down like that. It's amazing to have extra space there. All right, moving on to their kitchen space. We went with a Calia uh, faucet, tractable faucet. We kind of went black and the sink is a nice deep sink. Kind of went overboard on the sink, but I was telling them I uh, highly suggest any van life. I know it seems a little excessive. Bigger the sink, the better. It's so annoying trying to wash dishes in like a little little sink. Never works. So they got a really big sink. Get a little soap here, uh, wax down so that doesn't fall. And their gray water system is under here. Some of the fancier parts of the kitchen, uh, they decided to go with, it's almost like a grayish with some spotting in it, a quartz countertop. Um, and then the backsplash is super nice as well. It's like a it's kind of like a glossy dark blue stone. It kind of matches a lot of the accents going on in here. Definitely love the way this turned out. Like I said, under here, it's just the gray water. Lots and lots of storage under there. As for all the handles in this van, we went with, uh, I'm sure you've seen some people use these. They're RV Labs. I'll put the company down below. It's a North American company who uh, sells these, which we got because RV Labs based out of Australia. As you can tell, you kind of just use your fingers to open them and these aren't gonna slam open, fly open as you're driving. Definitely lots of deep storage space in here, like their pots, pans, stuff like that. Love the way these look. Won't open them all, but as you can tell, they have six more huge, deep storage. Uh, this pulls out all the way for all their, all their storage, whatever you want. So that's six, they all have the self-closing latches. Um, like I said, those will be linked down below. And uh, yeah, so they definitely have a lot of storage packed into this kitchen. We didn't waste any space whatsoever. All the cabinets in this whole van uh, we built by ourselves. Uh, that's what kind of my dad does for a living is custom cabinetry. So that kind of went hand in hand with the van build. A lot of the cabinetry was done by him. Um, so the uppers and the backs are both on these matte black handles, sticking with the theme. Uh, they are on the soft opening and closing. Uh, little hydraulics here and they also have the locking uh, just for a little bit of force they kind of lock into place when the van's shaking they're not flying open stuff like that you can hear them click into place same with the other side soft opening click into place their bed is a huge bed it's a 10 inch mattress it's an rv mattress this is a short double i believe so it's a full size bed um, like i said on one side they have their storage their clothes and stuff like that and on the other side they have nothing just so you can sit up and fit, sleep this way if you want or sit this way with your laptop uh, you still have that space and i'll be smashing your head on these and at the back i will show you around back they have some more dimmable lights some usb ports and stuff like that this is pretty much with the 170 you can have a huge bed bedroom and they still have a lot of space underneath which is where all their electrical setup is and uh yeah definitely a lot of space under there one more thing, uh, which a lot of people don't think about, is where you're gonna put your laundry, like a laundry chute type thing. So not the easiest to get to, but how often are you throwing dirty laundry away? Uh, if you just lift up the mattress, uh, there is a hole right here, as you can see, and that goes right down into a laundry hamper in the back of the garage. So if you have any smelly clothes, stuff like that, it's all back there, and you just have to crawl in later, pull out that basket, and you have your laundry ready to go. All right, hidden in this thing, we somehow managed to fit the compostable toilet. Um, 
this little under the bed here, this latch. It is all vented outside, so it's a constantly running fan. We have a hole drilled, uh, drilled in the ground, bottom of the van. It's constantly vented, you don't get any smell. And it's on heavy duty latches. And that's the toilet. You can sit here, you can even cook dinner if you want while you go into the washroom. Uh, and I believe this is the nature's head. Um, nothing but good reviews from these things. And it is on the sliding lock latches. You're not gonna slide back as you're sitting. You have to unlatch them to push it back in. And uh, this thing was to the millimeter of being able to fit it in, but I definitely like how discreet it is. You just tuck it right under the bed and uh, you kind of hide it. I know a lot of people are gross out with having toilets in the van, but I'm telling you once you use one of these things, it's amazing. All compostable, you just throw like peat moss in there. And uh, yeah, super handy to have one of these. So starting right side, I'm sure you guys have seen these. These are the Victron Energy, the battery monitor. This tells you everything, um, how much your, how much amperage your battery is pulling, what your battery bank's at. Um, it tells you how low your batteries have gone, everything like that. You can hook up Bluetooth on your phone. It tells you all that sweet information. Over here, you can find these on Amazon. Uh, looks pretty fancy. We got one with black this time to match the whole theme. It is a touch for all the pot lights in here. And it's also dimmable, which is super cool to have. Sometimes it's laid out and you pull over on the side of the road to sleep. You don't want these bright lights in your face. Moving over here, we have another outlet. We have one on the other side as well. Um, and then this is kind of the brains of everything. All the, the switches pretty much for everything. Um, you have some USBs. You have another battery monitor. As you can tell, it's at 13.1 right now. And a bunch of switches. So one of these is for the fridge, uh, the water pump, the SureFlow water pump and uh, some of the different lights in here on different switches. The two up front are on a separate switch right here, which is on at the moment. And we left a couple switches for adding any sort of electrical things you want in the future. And as for the roof and all the things in the roof, we have a max air fan at the front, max air fan at the back. So in the summer, like I said, even if you don't have windows, you can get that full circulation going. Um, definitely creates a huge breeze in here. And the pot lights, we have six actually like a glass uh, 12 volt pot light. I've used these in other van builds before and mine, I love them. Link down below. And as for the ceiling, we used a shiplap. We actually had to custom cut it. It's actually tongue groove pine turned into shiplap. Um, and then we just uh, sprayed these in a spray booth, put a lacquer on them as a little bit of a gloss, um, just for like wear and tear if you're banging them, just weather, moisture, damping and stuff like that. Don't see many people with these in the van, but I'll talk about the electrical setup and there's a reason why they have this, pretty big electrical setup. They decided to go with an induction two burner, I believe one's 1800 watts, one's 1500 watts, and I think it's 2500 watts max, so having them both on. Induction's cool, it's instant, never have to worry about propane. It definitely sucks a lot more power than propane. But like I said, everything's electric in this van. Propane's not used anywhere. And uh, it's instant heat, instant boiling. Um, you're not burning it as soon as you take the pot off. Uh, super cool, uh, cut into the core, it's super hidden. Still use it as counter space. This is their fridge. It's actually a 12 volt truck fridge. Um, it is an Italian design by Indel B. Uh, I've looked into this one, it's super good quality, a little pricey, but it's uh, amazing for power consumption. It takes little to no amperage and uh, it's pretty spacious. It's not a uh, chest fridge, which I do love. It's a stand-up fridge. It does have a little freezer in there as well. Um, like the fridge, like the color, matches all the appliances. That's their fridge. Alright, moving on to all the fun stuff for all of you electrical people. Uh, they do have the shore power for this van, so this whole van can be hooked up at any campsite uh, with a 30 amp extension cord or even your house uh, if you make sure not to use too many appliances. But it can be charged like that uh, if we don't already have enough solar on the roof. All right, before moving on to the garage, I don't want to be climbing all over my client's bed. Uh, I just wanted to show these two lights in the back, the little reading lights we installed. Uh, they are touch to turn on one touch to shut off, and they also have little USBs in the bottom. I thought those were a nice little touch. Uh, it's good having light back here, and you want all the lights shut off, and just these two little reading lights uh, before going to bed. All right, moving on to their garage. As you can see, super tall, lots of storage. On this whole side, the very back, they actually have uh, electric water heater as well. It's not propane, it's electric. So they have hot water in this van. They also have the outdoor shower. So they have hot water in the outdoor shower as well. It's super handy uh, and then they have the water fill station here for I believe 32 gallons of fresh water which is really nice to have. I uh, don't have to worry about running out of water. 
One of the cool things added to this van, which I really want in my van and every other van, I suggest it. A lot of the times you're coming back here at night looking for wood or your axe or something like that at a campsite. This little button right here, we added a super bright adjustable light at the back, which lights up the whole garage, uh, which I find super handy. Definitely love that little touch to the build. All right, I'll quickly go over the electrical, some of the key features. Uh, the beast in the front here uh, is a 3000 watt uh, Victron Multi Plus Inverter Charger. So this allows you, like I said, to have shore power, charge the whole system. It's also a 3000 watt inverter. A lot of cool settings this thing can do if you look into it. Uh, so that's the big beast in there that takes control of all the 110, uh, the water heater, the, the cooktop, stuff like that. So any of your 110 appliances. And in the back, we have the 80 amp uh, MPPT charge controller, which turns all the solar on the roof, the 740 watts we have, turns that into usable energy, stores them in the batteries. Moving on to the batteries, we have four 110 amp hours lithium, so 440 amps of lithium ion batteries they have in there. It's actually a Canadian brand, um, Enerwatt, I believe. Uh, those will be linked down below. Got them from a local supplier here in Ontario. Definitely like to shop local for some of that stuff. Uh, so definitely huge battery bank, 440 amp hours lithium, 740 watts of solar on the roof, and a 3000 watt charge controller. Obviously in there you have all the fuse box, you have the major shutoff, everything's fused properly, um, stuff like that. That's the huge electrical system. If you want a more in depth uh, video of this, going over everything, stuff like that, let me know down below. So obviously you're going to be throwing a bunch of storage in here. You also have beside the toilet, which is all boxed in. You can fit like long skis and stuff like that. Definitely biggest no-no in van life. You don't want anything touching those batteries because you can blow up. So we have this uh, plexiglass uh, sheet cut to shape. So you can remove that if you ever need to maintenance anything in there. And you can just push it in. So you always have a protection. It's like a wall and you can still see it. You do want to show off the electrical. Uh, it's a pretty nice setup in this van. So you keep that visible. Um, and yeah, that's the whole setup.